Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, Evoc have got some new bike packing gear. Giro have a brand new sort of a freestyle helmet, I think you could probably call it that. Uh, there's a banging new GT Force, actually, Henry's going to tell you yeah. about it in a minute. Uh, and a really cool rewind entry, a really super good one. All right, straight into news. Um, what we got first, Henry? Yes, yeah, so we've got the new 29er GT Force. So previously, it's been seeing some quite kind of a lot of podium finishes under the GT Enduro team. Yeah, Mr. Mose, yeah. In its mullet guys. I mean, sticking on the, I suppose if we're sticking to hair theme, a 27 <laughs> would be short back and sides, mullet. Maybe this is like Gareth Gate curtains. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But um, it's certainly a cool looking bike. 150 at the back, 170 on the front, and full alloy. They haven't really got involved with the carbon thing, which I think is quite interesting. I don't know if that may become. Who knows? Knowing them, I reckon it probably is. It probably coming. will. But I quite like another bike. I don't have an issue with them. No, no. Know, those, they work. Yeah, and so. I think um, going, yeah, 170 front, super burly bike. Yeah. They've got that, they're keeping with that silhouette, that clean silhouette for cables but all external I, at the same course, time. I love that. Which I think it's actually very good. Yeah, I think you're going to start seeing more of that. I, I predict actually at Eurobike this year, you're going to see more manufacturers doing it. Mm -hmm. so, you know, NS bikes have got the, like, the recess on the, uh, on the underside of the down tube. The GT yeah. have obviously got it on the top side of the... Bowl as well. Yeah, bowl, bowl external. Yeah. Canyon yeah. are going in that sleeve. Yeah, and then my trusty Nook proof doesn't even have anything. It just has them running down the down tube. Oh, and no nice lesson. and simple. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think it's, it's, I don't think it's an issue. Yeah. But, uh, but it looks good. It does look really good, yeah. Good geometry, eh? Yeah. And also, yeah, the geometry is really, really um, well, super progressive. Long reach, like kind of as you'd expect, really, from... It seems like these numbers are becoming more and more normal, but they look great. I'm looking at the seat tube angle as well. Yeah. Yeah. So a nice deep seat angle. Yeah, uh, that's what we're talking in the reach. I think the XLs are up there with the Nuke Proofs, aren't they? I think they're over 5... 15 or yeah. something, aren't they? Let's then, have a look. So that would make the large. I would love it if all reaches, all geometry charts were in the same order. Yeah. Because I'm trying to pick out some of Oh, no, you, you look around them. Yeah. Let's get a team. So yeah. reach but for large. It's a bike industry. We don't have standards. <laughs> yeah. Or there's a new one each month. So. I was thinking, do you know what the standard, standard I can think of, which I think is actually the water bottle? Yeah. The water bottle is the only standard. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, and I think it's. What um, are we playing at? Yeah. <laughs> But we've also got some really cool stuff coming from Evoc, which oh, I know yeah. you've been yeah. kind of getting stuck into. Yeah, so um, our Sea Otter actually, I, they didn't, they weren't showing anything off on the stand, but I did see like tucked away behind when I was chatting to a couple of them, some bike packing prototype stuff. Yes. Had a little look and they also had that really cool little hip pack mm. I was telling you about. It's super lightweight and it's got like a stretchy strap so you can crank it up tight, doesn't cut in, mm -hmm. just big enough for your phone and you know keys yeah, and bare, bare minimal. Uh, but I've got some really cool bike packing gear with boa fixings. Yeah, boa fixings yeah, yeah, so it's a really good usage of it. This is the stuff on the screen. Now there's a, there's a bar mount bar, there's a seat pack, there's also what? frame bags and stuff. And what I like about that seat pack is it looks like, you know, if you've got a full suspension bike with a dropper seat post, you can have the biggest saddlebag in the world, but you're probably gonna run into limitations. Oh, for sure. Lots yeah. of tire buzz and all sorts, but it looks like it's out the way as you could hope it to be. Man, the stuff, it's really I, good. I love the way that they, produce gear like Evoc are really you know I think they're a really decent company they really yeah. take the time thinking about the products um, yeah here's a few more images on screen there's lots coming later this year we're probably going to check this stuff out the full range at Eurobike and judging by the way they keep launching new products I'd say they're gearing up for another big release so um, keep your eye out for that yeah super exciting Okay, and there's a brand new bike from Giant as well, which you were showing me earlier. I know yeah. you were pretty excited about this one. Yeah, the Rain 29er is finally here. Yeah. It's taken long enough, but my God, doesn't it look good? Super clean. In, in Blake camo orangey kind of color, yeah. I guess you'd call it. I don't, know, I don't know how you could describe that green to do it justice. Yeah. It looks real nice. And the numbers for a large, which I know is what I always go for because I'm a self-centered individual and that's how tall I am. I always talk about XL. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in at 493, which is massive. That's, that is really big for a large, yeah. Yeah, like the medium is, that, I think it's about 10 mil longer than what the 27.5 trance is in large. Oh yeah. So I mean, wow. it's, it's, it's really, that's a really progressive. change, yeah. yeah. And China have kind of got form of this every couple of years. They seem to just, maybe they just give it to the intern guy or something and they absolutely knock it out the park. Like the Glory, Glory was released many years ago, mm -hmm. but super progressive then. So 
Probably one of the best privateer down bikes of all time, really, yeah. with the money and what you got for it. Yeah, and that original Rain in 2000, yeah. sorry, the original Rain 650 in 2015, yeah. also super progressive. So they tend to sometimes just go absolutely wild and just go right on the cutting edge. I think it's rad. Yeah, I've got enough for us to say, other than, <laughs> other than that you were saying that there's a, an SX version. Yes, earlier. SX. So what is that? So SX has traditionally been their, um, their kind of more guntier version of the same bike. So yeah, you have the Anthem okay. SX, the yeah. Trance SX, and now the Rain SX. And it's usually maybe 10 mil higher in the fork with a coil shock on there, maybe slightly, it'll go away from your lightweight carbon rims to set, say, a set of burlier alloy ones. Yeah, okay, I get it. So can you do that with a stride of the top end one's yeah. got a bigger fork on it, a little yeah. bit more race orientated? Yeah, totally. And I think this is this, a bike like this, and traditionally the rain's been really good at it. Hmm. The SX version just covers the gap between your enduro bike and your bike park bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. kind of for people that do a bit of everything. And it looks really, really cool. A coil sprung 150 mil. Travel 29, it would be Bit green. of a brute, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, could do a lot. Yeah, uh, being giant as well, one of the biggest bike manufacturers on the planet is going to have a decent warranty. You can get, get them and get the spares literally anywhere. Yeah, totally. It's a pretty safe brand to uh, buy into. Super cool. And um, we've also yeah, got... Yeah, big wheels. Big wheels. Yeah, so um, WTB have got... Uh, it's, it's actually not a new tyre. It's a Vigilante. It's been a really popular, aggressive tyre, but they're now doing it at 29 in a 2.8. Um, Joe, I'm not really sure how I feel about the whole... 2.8 yeah. thing still. I, I never got it the first time around. I know people are the 2.6 and the 2.5s, no problem. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool. It's, but it's difficult, I think, when you go up to that sort of width to get the, the stability in the carcass. You have to go so heavy and so thick, yeah. then you kind of begrudging pedaling it. I mean, that said, they do do a dual ply casing mm -hmm. um, and then they do their they, they do their fast rolling and uh, low grip and the opposite way around. So they've got various different oh, yes. casings <laughs> and rubber compounds yeah. available, tubeless compatible and stuff. Um, and they do their light casing as well with slash guard on it. So just to try and resist just like mm -hmm. sidewall cut. So I think they're really thinking of stuff that people want. And, and the Vigilante is a very interesting tire because to look at it, mm. it doesn't look that far from say a knobby neck or... Yeah, fairly so, close, I guess, yeah. It is a very aggressive tire. Mm. And you know, it's uh, a couple of years ago, it was well, one of the one straps that you go for. They were fantastic. I mean, I, th I think there's a range, what WTB are offering now, suddenly they've just got four or five great looking tires like great the Judge tire. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, really aggressive, so I think they're definitely worth looking at in addition to all of the usual suspects out yeah, there. Big time. Um, well, this is funny actually. Um, you had a gr Gorilla Gravity, didn't you? So the crazy guys from oh, Colorado. Oh, yes, yes. My friend's got one yeah. actually. Yeah, they're cool bikes. So Gorilla Gravity have got their own sort of formula for making carbon frames in Colorado. They call it Revved Carbon. And the whole yeah. idea is it's super tough, loads of resin oh, in it. Yeah. Yes. So to yes. try and make it as impact resistant as possible. And actually, they say that their carbon doesn't really even need sort of rubber bumpers and they don't like adding stuff to the bike, mm -hmm. which I kind of like. I don't like adding like stuff. I'm, I'm in two minds. It's a good idea to have that stuff, but if you don't need it. Yeah, I kind of, how do, I feel it's sometimes strange when, personally, I don't like getting a carbon bike because it's light and then covering it in in rubber and plastic. To, to make it impact proof. It yeah. just seems like, why just why even go to all that length to the yeah. And their, their whole approach, they've got a modular kind of approach. So if you don't know Gorilla Gravity, essentially they've got several different bikes in the range, different wheel sizes, different travels. Whichever one you buy, you then have the option of changing the seat stays on it to change the rear end travel, mm -hmm. uh, changing the chips, and you can change the wheel size by oh, changing wow. cups in the front end. So you could buy one bike, arguably, have a different back end and two sets of wheels and have two completely different oh, bikes. Oh my god, so it's like so, a hair salon yeah, in your garage. Of, yeah, a car Any style hair you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I think actually that goes really well with their sense of humour. So they've just launched a couple of videos just to no, demonstrate these were good. how tough their bikes are. Um, here's some shots right now with the, uh, well, the sledgehammer test. That's a pretty good test, that's, to be fair. That's, that's very good. So yeah. It simulates a rock hitting a down tube at 42 miles an hour, quite a specific and speed. I, yeah, and I don't know what trails you ride, but sometimes I'm blasting down the trail and I realise there's maybe some roots, maybe yeah. some rocks, but yeah. also lots of jeweled tape decks. Oh yeah, yeah, for Just sure. littered Are you there for a campsite, you hit Jack Jones, you know, you get hit with an acoustic guitar, that sort of stuff just happens. <laughs> um, it's, it's all there. I think I think those guys are awesome. I mean, it's really cool that they're doing stuff like this. Nice bit of fun. And actually, it, it, can remember there was that Santa Cruz video many years ago, where they were testing all that carbon. It's a bit yeah. like that, but just on steroids. And what I love about it, is they haven't just done it 
you know, someone with his iPhone. And, but they've done it really well. Like, super high production, yeah. yeah with yeah. a lot of good sound effects. The guy's it. great. It's, su- it's just super well done. Thoroughly recommend watching it in full. Yeah, tune into their stuff. And check out the range of bikes as well. Really interesting concept, what they're doing up in Colorado. Super cool. Um, the last one is something that you might have seen on some free riders heads. The 50 to 1 crew have been using the helmet. I know some uh, some Marin team riders have been using it as well. Mm-hmm. And it's been scattered around. Is that open face helmet from Giro. Yeah. Gyro. But it does anyway, look good. The helmet looks amazing. So I think everyone liked the open face format of the switchblade, but mm-hmm. they didn't they weren't using the chin bar basically. Yes. So why why have one? So they've developed a helmet, especially for those riders, the free riders. Um, kind of taking cues, I guess, from like a dirt jump helmet and a mm-hmm. kayaking helmet with the ear protection. Coal mining. Yeah, coal mining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bowling, all of those things. Aesthetically, what do you think of it? I think it looks really cool. I think um, it looks actually okay. I think I'd yeah. make it look very uncool if I wore one. Um, <laughs> But it's actually a really super technical helmet. It's got the MIPS spherical system in it. Yes, so that's, this that's is two cool. MIPS layers, and they basically it's like a ball joint. So to help prevent against rotation of injuries. But mm-hmm. one is EPS and one is EPP. So EPS is designed to crush, and EPP rebounds. So for little hits, yeah. Yeah. Or if you're on a skate park, you just bash it back of your head. You don't need to replace the helmet straight away. I think that's the theory anyway. The fact that's that you can take really some little knocks and stuff, and then you've got the bigger impact of yeah. the EPS. Uh, which is obviously designed to really try and save you in the event of a, an actual impact. Because Giro, Giro, yep. they do have, a, like, you know, they do do a lot of cool stuff. Because I think this is the ether it came from on the road scene. Yeah, like that's right. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's so, yeah. similar sort of thing, but they were, you know, with the, um, you know, removable chin bars, you yeah. know, that sort of stuff. They do, I really like a brand that's very progressive. And, yeah, and making very specific yeah. items out there. You know, the Enduro race helmet with a chin bar, I think mm. that's a great <laughs> idea. Mm. Um, but yeah, I do like it. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think it's uh, a weird look? It's a good look? Uh, and if it's out there, let us know um, what other ones on the market. Fox obviously got one. They got the, what's it, the drop or something? Yeah, something or other. Yeah. yeah. And then similar. obviously there's the Switchblade and there's the older helmets out there, some various open face ones on the market. Um, let us know, yay or nay, in those comments underneath. Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave. Um, a little bit different this week actually because we're um, everyone's asked for it so we've made a video all about my bike cave you can see a few clips of it on the screen now there's actually gonna be a full video I'm gonna root through the cupboards and show you some all some obscure old stuff I've got tucked away um, and it's going up this weekend on GMBN Tech so keep an eye out for this yeah it's a bloody good one it's a bit going in Dottie's bike cave is a bit like the Sistine Chapel or anything the level of details are oh my god <gasps> No way! It's I'm quite, quite proud market. of that little place, yeah, because yeah. how small the room is. It's Super cool. pretty good, yeah. So uh, tune in on Sunday for that one. So this week in Rewind, we have something pretty special. Well, to be fair, normally we get some awesome stuff sent in. And if you're at home watching this now and you think, I've got an absolute belt in my garden shed, please send it in. We've got the uploader below. Don't be shy. And hopefully we can feature you on the show. So this week we have one from James and it is a GT RTS and it is one fine vessel. Oh, I still get clammy palms looking at these, you know? <laughs> yeah. So James from Chesterfield, he says he's missing sending it through on retro week retro, because he was away. Can't get my words out. But the GT needed a long and overdue service. Mm. It was on show three of the tech show, but now he's done up a bit and he's found some other bits and bobs. Oh. So it's certainly eye-catching this. That's synchro stem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so nice. Diacomp, well, Diacomp 987, can't leave a brakes on there. I do like the fact he's got Tioga Wonder Dog tyres on there, because it was a good name for them, because you couldn't stand a straight line. You'd literally run <laughs> terrible tyres, but... Well, only turning dog legs. Yeah, so. yeah and through dog eggs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mag 21 RockShox fork, so that's still, I still think that suit looks cool now. I know they're so skinny and slender. I love the lacing on that wheel as well. Oh, that's got a snowflake wheel. Yeah. Pretty so, cool. I remember working in bike shops growing up and people coming in asking for snowflake wheels. Mm. I literally mechanics would just walk out. Just yeah. Like, See you later. Yeah. Do you ever do the tie and soldering thing? <laughs> Is that ever? I think it's I know, incredibly stiff. There's a bit stiff. of a phase of people yeah. trying to do that and stuff. Um, it never worked out if it was actually any better or not. I always thought the wheel needed to have an element of flex. I think it is just ultra stiff. So for track riders, it was Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. people. Yeah. Um, the front hub, that's an old retro Hope hub. I think it was called a tie glide perhaps or well, maybe the tie glide was a real one but um titanium shell in the middle which oh, is wow. quite cool and then alloy flanges and bonded together Holy real nice. and then there's the old back end god look how skinny it looks 
by today's standards. Yeah. Crazy. So that was a high pivot and it had like a crazy rocker under the BB. And that was a custom no lean shock and it pierced the seat tube at the bottom. Oh yes, why don't so, Really weird design. Yeah. And can I just say how immaculately this bike's maintained? It is. It looks just flicking through that cassette. And it is gleaming. You can eat your dinner off that. Yeah. It is amazing. super gleam. And I've also noticed, well, so what's this? So we've got a couple of DCDs. So I don't know if you remember these Henry, but they're called Dave's Chain Device. Nice. So the guy that they were named after was Dave Hemming. He was the first guy to win a silver medal in the UK uh, World Championships oh, wow. in Downhill. And he was on a Klein hardtail with a handlebar about this big. Yeah. And just had it all the way up. <laughs> uh, and he got, he got a silver medal, but he got fed up with losing his chain. Because back then everyone had like triple chain sets. Yes, yeah, yeah. Big baggy chains going everywhere. So he just sat on the chain stay basically and looped the chain a little bit further around the chain rings. Oh, yes. So just it's nice to... and simple. Yeah. And it kind of worked, but then everyone started going for full enclosed guides mm -hmm. and getting a bit more advanced. Well, it's funny because Chris Kavarik's actually got his little thing out at the moment. I see. It's on the, it's on the top, though. It's on the it? top, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of. Kind of cool, but you know, they have phased out that because Bionicon did them as well. That's couple, right, yeah. In fact, the Bionicon ago. one was we quite similar, similar to a that. new version of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now it's kind of, I mean, I just want a top guide and I don't have too many issues, luckily, in a narrow wide, obviously. Do you know what? I've, I've only just fitted a top guide to my bike okay. again. I haven't had one for so long, yeah. And touch wood is. Been all right. Actually, kind good. of fairly trust it. You know, yeah. you get through rust stuff and you get a pedal, you're like, is it still there? <laughs> so, pretty cool, yeah. That's, that's a nice little trip down memory lane. Thank you for sending that one in, James. It's cool to see. Top mods, you know the drill. This is where we get all the cool stuff that you do to your bikes. Um, it could be changing some handlebar grips, whatever it is that makes your bike different to the next one. Uh, it, honestly, it doesn't have to be much, or it could be a crazy project you've embarked on. Uh, whatever it is, send yours in. The link to upload it is right there. Um, Henry, what have we got first this week? First of all, we have, and we. It didn't come through with any name or details, so this is a kind of a, oh, a shout out if you're watching. Must be so excited getting the pictures on the uploader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this super well done, polished, giant glory. Maybe, I don't know what year it would have been, but it's with the Pierce Down Tube, so I'm thinking 2010-ish. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is super and polished. it looks fantastic. He's done such a good like job. Eight on there too. I yeah. believe it is. It's also gone for a reverb, so maybe it does a bit of pedaling. Yeah. And um, yeah, in Man, a, must 11 have taken speed. Ages. Set. Have you ever polished up like a bike or anything like that? My friend did a gambler like two years ago, yeah. and it did look just fantastic. I've always quite fancied it, but it could never be bothered to be honest. <laughs> I think it does take a little bit of patience. Yeah, yeah, it does. When it, when it comes off right, it comes off. So, oh, dude, um, whoever you are that's done this, we'd love to hear from you. Um, let us know who you are in those comments. Um, and tell us all about yourself so we can give you some props because I think that's that looks really really cool. Yeah, we've also got. Actually, a really interesting bike. We've got two in top mods this week. And this bike is not only really interesting in its own right, but there's also a bit of a funny story behind it. Because we've got a feeling it was ridden. So me and Doddy, the only time we met before I started working here was a couple of years ago in a, a ski, um, mountain biking resort called Lazark in France. Yeah. And there was a guy- It's funny because I've forgotten about this until you talked yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy riding what we think was this bike, because he's a mutual friend and where you're from yeah. in Hereford. Yeah. We've pieced it all together, so we think it's, me and Doddy have seen this bike before. Yeah. It's really weird. So I, I reckon you either <laughs> bought this bike off uh, the lovely Rachel Gurney or off Adam White. Yeah. I reckon. Because he was there as well, from. riding, we yeah. think this. Yeah. So I remember this bike really vividly. It, so you say it's what, seven of, number seven of seven? Yeah. yeah it's super rare. It was Adrian, isn't it? Guy at Swarth, I think. I believe Mason. so, yeah. yeah. So it's a carbon back end, a high pivot with an idler wheel and a steel front end with like pretty radical geometry, by the yeah. considering the age of it. Oh yeah, the high pivot. I mean, high pivots seem to be going in like a pendulum swing. Yeah. <laughs> so this time round, he's very much at the forefront. It looks fantastic. And I always remember, assuming that it may be that bike, mm -hmm. how much Adam loved that bike. Yeah, I remember um, singing its praises. And then he could never get rid of it. And I think Rachel took it off, off him afterwards. I was like, no, we're, we're going to keep this going. Oh, really? Yeah, because <laughs> it's, like, it's really well made and it's yeah. like it's a bespoke bike, essentially. Um, did a, so what's the guy's name sent in? Ollie from Hereford, yeah. Um, so what sort of geometry is this thing running? I don't even know, it's got, yeah, so, oh yeah, you go, 64 and a half degree head angle with a four, four, five mil reach, so that's probably about a medium or something, I but that's actually so, yeah. like pretty bang on. Yeah, no, it's good. 430 mil back end, um, and resprayed it. Yeah, I love the fact he resprayed it, because he didn't just like rattle can it, he seems to make such a good job of it. Yeah. And, um, and just to look at it, especially without, it's funny looking at it in this picture, where it's got, you know, the steerer uncut and the chain off. Yeah. It kind of just lets the the frame kind of, you know, just realizing, 
about you know that heightened stay and stuff yeah. like that, and it just looks fantastic. There's something it's about really it I'd really quite like. And once it's all been built up, it's been topped off with the gumball tyres, oh, obligatory yeah. almost. Yeah, they make it look even longer, I think, actually, gumballs <laughs> yeah, on a bike. Yeah, they do. I don't, it, know, yeah. I don't know why that is, but yeah, yeah. they seem to lengthen the bike quite nicely. But yeah, it looks rad. Looks rad. Good work. Um, and also, just looking at your, what you've written in the comment here, um, starting to think my uploads aren't getting to you boys, as this is the fourth time I've sent the same thing into Top Mods. Sorry about that, Ollie, but we do get so many entries. Yeah. Um, so for anyone out there that's struggling or maybe we haven't seen yours, um, keep sending them and we'll try and get you on the show. We just get a lot of entries. Um, thanks again. Okay, now time for tech of the week. A little bit of a weird one this week because um, I've actually just been trying out a prototype mudguard. I just thought I'd show this to you, just some early shots of it. I know that you've seen it, some of the pictures I've taken. Um, it's by Rapid Racer Products and it mounts directly onto the back of the, the sort of the, your fork arch, really. Um, as far as I know, it fits on Suntour forks, the Fox 34 and the Fox 36. But here's just a, a couple of cheeky pictures of it on the screen now. I think it looks so clean and I, even though I'm obsessed with cable ties, I love the fact it doesn't use cable ties. Yeah. You can just bolt the thing on and take it off. It's got to be good for the environment. Yeah, so. sometimes, like, if I know, if I'm not sure it's going to be dry for a long time, yeah. I'll be like, oh, I'll just leave the cable tie on and it turns like three months and I've still got it on just because I don't want to be snapping. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, not, you know, you don't need a full-length guard in the middle of summer, um, but those guards do seem to have really good protection mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to have any sort of hindrance of a big tyre. That's a 2.4 tyre in there and there's plenty of room around there. Yeah. You can almost get your hand in there for mud clearance, but does, yeah, it just looks pretty cool. Does it have much adjustment? Like, oh yeah, you, that's a good point, yeah. Like, so, he, again, this is a really early one. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's just made out of different plastics and stuff than the production will be. Um, it comes with a series of shims, oh, so you okay. can adjust the pitch of the front of it. Perfect. Depending on, you know, every fork might be slightly different or, mm -hmm. you know, depending on your preferences, how big the tyre is. So you can have the front tipped up or down. Um, I think it's completely level in this shot, um, and there's two sets of shims that come with it and different sets of bolts. Am I just alone in thinking that mud guards like this one, not just this one that's on the screen, but of mm -hmm. this type, mm -hmm. they look quite cool now? When it first came out, I was repulsed by them. I was like, oh, Kind of out of the bike, it's disgusting. It's just become a bit of a look now, but it's just it's functional. I actually, it's funny, I have one, I think it's an R, no, not an R. No, you've got the, the crud, the XL, yeah, the huge yeah, one, is the huge. Danny Hart runs, yeah. And so I have what I think to be a very nice looking bike. Nuke proof mega, yeah. red forks, all swanky, this, that, and the other. It's great to watch, well, great to look at. It's a good picture you put on uh, Instagram. Oh, yeah, there, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, anyway, people never comment on the bike, they'll go, oh, that's a pretty cool mud guard. It's like, what? When did this happen? Look at the bike, it's incredible! And it's like, people oh, have realised. That bit of plastic's pretty cool, you know? Keeps the crap out of your face, it's got to be yeah, decent, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a good, um, yeah, I just leave mine on now, I don't even bother. Yeah, yeah. so uh, anyway, keep your eye out for um, Rapid Racer Products Mudguard um, coming out at some point later in the year, as far as I know. I don't have too many details yet because this is just sent in just to have a look at. Um, nice one. Oh, uh, there we go. There's another weekly GMBN Tech Show in the bag. Any comments and questions, let us know uh, right underneath the video. In the meantime, I'm going to throw you to a video all about how a saddle is designed and developed. Um, pretty geeky, but really, really interesting. Right down there. Yeah, and I'm going to throw to a maintenance video I did. I don't know if it's hacks, maybe just a really thorough setup. Basically, if you've ever had trouble with your tubeless tyres, maybe uh, just check out that, that. Actually, everyone has trouble with tyres. Yeah, and you can just yeah. go step by step and maybe learn a thing or two. Maybe not, we'll find out. Or three. Or three. <laughs> um, as always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech and share and subscribe and love us. Cheers, guys.